Welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners, part 49. Problems with steam whistles. The steam whistle on screen is the original one that I removed from my large traction engine, or to give it its correct title, my large showman's engine. I'll connect some compressed air to it so you can hear what it sounds like. And as you can hear, it sounds okay. Why did I change it? I preferred the sound of a four-way chime whistle. You will see that later on in the video when I first fitted it. There are many different types of miniature steam whistles available. These bell type whistles, like the one you're looking at, are very popular. This is a different type of whistle and they work very well. Like the bell whistles, they are available in different sizes to suit the application. Most steam whistles have many minor problems, the main one being is when you blow the whistle, the condensate goes everywhere. And also, the whistles are generally a little bit overscale for the application. In fact, to be honest, most of the time these whistles are far too big and are nowhere near the scale size. To illustrate the point, I'm holding a couple of whistles next to the Stuart 504 boiler. And as you can clearly see, they are miles too big. What you can do, however, is fit the valve to the turret and then pipe the valve to the whistle that can be put somewhere else on the steam plant out of the way not on top of the boiler. Although this particular valve is still far too big for the turret on the 504 boiler. In my opinion, the best way to make steam whistles is to have them purposely overscale and increase their size like this one I made for my Stirling single. This whistle started its life as a 5 8 diameter whistle. I cut the end bit off the whistle and soft soldered it into an extension which is much bigger. If you want to see how I made this whistle, please watch the series titled My Sterling Single. The resonance chamber is machined to be quite thin. This next clip is taken from my series My Sterling Single and you can hear what the whistle sounds like under steam. This is a great sounding whistle and very easy to make. This next clip shows how I fit a steam whistle to a whistle adapter that I made. For this application the whistle needs to be permanently fixed to this adapter, so the 542 will help with that. And to make doubly sure that it's a firm fit, first of all I screw the whistle into the adapter. Then using the tailstock chuck I clamp the other end to hold that firmly in position and I slightly rotate the chuck. And this makes sure that the whistle is very tightly screwed into the adapter. And now it looks like this. This is a three-way chime whistle fitted to my castle steam boiler. And this is a four-way chime whistle fitted to my large showman's engine. These chime whistles are really good, but they need a lot of steam to blow. In the clip you're about to see, I was pulling the chain to blow the chime whistle before I had sufficient pressure in the boiler. Nothing showing on the pressure gauge and not enough to blow the whistle. After another 20 minutes or so, you can see that there's an increase in pressure. It's very slow though. Back in the workshop, I'm showing how this very small whistle, which is only 3 8 of an inch in diameter, fitted to a commercial whistle valve, blows very well. This next whistle is made by a company called PM Research. But this particular whistle isn't blowing very well. I've tried adjusting it, but to no avail. However, I did fix it, and I'll be showing it in detail in another video. These whistles are made by my friend Chris English at CME Engineering. You can buy them from Blackgates Engineering. They really are loud. The sound is distorting the camera's microphone. And depending on the size of the model, they can be fitted in a visible area or hidden away somewhere. This next whistle is very small, and it's made in China by a company called Microcosm. Listen to this. It's very small, very high pitched and very loud. The smallest steam whistle I have is this one. I don't know where it came from but it really is tiny and the sound volume that it creates actually hurts my ears. That's enough of that. Once again here you see the 3 8 diameter whistle mounted directly to the valve. But as you can see in this clip it's a very easy job to connect a pipe from the whistle valve and then you can put the whistle where you want to. Here's a close-up shot of a typical whistle valve 
These once again are the type made by Chris English at CME Engineering. And these are the ones that I use most of the time. In this application on the 504 boiler, this whistle valve would be fine because it moves the whistle further away from the boiler, which means that the condensate doesn't run all over the boiler and leave white marks on it. However, I'm going to use a PM Research whistle. I have two of them and here they are. One works and the other doesn't. I've adjusted the one in the foreground and at the moment the bell is in the wrong position but it's the only position I can set the bell to make it whistle at all. I don't need to modify the bell, I need to fix the problem and I know what it is. I will show that in a future video very soon. I'd better mention that all of the whistles you've been hearing apart from the ones fitted to the engines, are running on 40 pounds per square inch of compressed air. I'm going to blow the other one, which sounds entirely different, and yes, I do know that the bell's in a different position, but as I've just mentioned, if I put the bell of the other one in this position, it doesn't blow at all. But this one's okay. A very clean sound and it's very loud indeed for its size. I hope that this feature on steam whistles has given you some ideas. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists, and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch, and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back,